Welcome back. Blake Cousins here, Third Phase Moon. We've got a full-length documentary for you tonight. It's a special report in regards to a major movie producer. Christopher Peters has come forward to Third Phase of Moon to share his experiences that's been happening to him over the past two years in regards to visitations from another world or angelic beings. In this full-length documentary, we're going to be showcasing the evidence and the testimony from Christopher Peters himself, along with Apollo Asteria, who we sent out there to meet up with them. Now enjoy this free full-length documentary exclusively on Third Phase of Moon, The Hollywood UFO Connection. Hollywood producer Christopher Peters, son of Hollywood mogul John Peters. Chris has been in the movie industry for decades. Okay, this is my life. I, I love my wife and family and I was blessed to have it, but um, you know, I just kind of was resigned. I had always felt something was coming for me in my life and I didn't know and I don't see myself as a person that has any more value than any other person or life. We're all the same, you know, but I always felt there was something calling me. So long story short, I'm working, at, I work at the house, you know, and one day I'm walking, we're having trash cans delivered from the city, you know, as a new, uh, new trash cans. And I'm walking down the driveway, it's a September day, it's clear skies, it's around 12 noon. I walk down the driveway, I get in the trash cans, I'm walking up the driveway and I casually look up above our house, the roof, maybe 100 feet in the air, and I see what looks like some kind of craft sitting in the air. It's not a plane, it's not a helicopter, it's not a drone. It looks like a giant walnut with two big pieces of metal across the front of it. And I stood there and I was totally blown away. I'm looking at this thing for five minutes and I'm seeing the sun shine off the back of it. I'm seeing the front in dark kind of metal and like the sun shining off the back in like a glowing silver type of metal. And after five minutes, I'm like, I'm looking at this thing and it's, there's no sound. It's as big as a small plane. These beings, and is there a message? So I see the, I see the Stephen Greer movies and, and, and I contacted him and we, and I, and I said, you know, your life is an amazing life. Let's do a, a reality series on your life. And, and we were about to do, kind of do that. And, 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 and so I had that relationship with him and it didn't go anywhere, but, but we were going there. But in watching those movies, I discovered his sort of like with the laser thing and the whole calling, you know, the craft from the sky. So on that first day when that happened, I remember that. I was so blown away after that first day. I thought it would never happen again, but I was so compelled and totally blown away by what had just happened. I ran out that day to go buy a little laser pointer because I thought, you know what? It's never going to happen again, but why not try? And so the next day, that next night, I'm doing the dishes at nine o'clock at night and I think, you know what, let's go give this a try. So I, I go outside the kitchen, I'm standing in this garden and I do the little meditation. I do the flashes in the sky, nothing. I think, oh, you know what, it's not gonna happen. I say, okay, I'm gonna try it one more time before I go in. I do it again and the sky lights up. <laughs> Five massive pulses, 100 feet over my head, perfect circles. I scream for my wife to come running out. She comes running out. The thing moves over the house, maybe at 20 feet, another 10 huge pulses. Whoa. And she runs inside. She's like, I don't know what this is. I gotta get out of here. But what happened was, from that day, and every day since, 24 seven, it was a building thing. It didn't just come all at once, but a relationship started. I started having craft over my house every day, shooting stars 10 feet over my head, me going outside, playing songs, going, if you, you like this song, whoever you are, if you like this song, do a shooting star over my head. Song plays, shooting star, right on the downbeat of the song, boom, boom, over my head. I started to be in relationship with this phenomena. And then what happened was every single day, 24 seven, weeks and weeks, same things, day after day after day after day. And then it would start to grow and more would happen, more orbs, more lights in the sky, more lights starting to appear around me. Here's a good example. Do you see the cloud deck up there? Okay. That, that is one of their craft hovering in the sky. 
as you can see below the cloud deck, just sitting there. There started to be a relationship and a communication that started to happen that I became aware of. I started to realize that they hide in plain sight. They have a great affinity for nature. Nature is who they are. Nature is God. Nature is them. And again, I'm not religious. They use things from nature to communicate with an individual to set up a pattern that over repetitive times, the individual wakes up and goes, oh my God, that happens now every single day. That must mean some kind of communication. I started to realize there was a dialogue happening, meaning they would do plasma owls out of the blue. I'd be looking up at the sky, I'd see flashes of light, and I'd see a plasma owl in the shape of an owl, the sound of the owl, plasma flying overhead, flapping, and then vanish. When this all started, you know, there was a good two years that were craft over my head, orbs everywhere, and then an evolution would happen. I would wake up one morning and I had triangle scar. I've never had a surgery in my life, not one. I woke up six, seven months in, into it. I had two triangle scars across my chest and then a line going off the top of the triangle and then another set of triangle scars side by side on my gut and then a line at the tip of the triangle going off to the side and then two parallel lines with boxes in and triangles connected in scars carved into my skin it's still there and I started to learn over time because it's it's a process that they teach you that they take you through. And it happened over three years every day I, when I, and this all started, it was orbs flying, and then and it was craft, and that was a good six months, and then it went in, and then it started in the house, orbs everywhere in the house, flying mist, you know, faces in the mist. And then something changed in me the scars came stuff was changing in my consciousness where I could literally feel my mind connecting with the air and I, I, I started to understand that I, they were teaching me that consciousness isn't just a state of being that it's a physical land that it's an actual tactile tool alive and it's God at the same time and it's the space that all spirit beings etc live in but it's this gift that every human being has and so I started to realize there were real world effects of this transitioning me and these scars and all these downloads for example I would take my iPad and I started to realize as the iPad I would sit outside in the car and as the signal would die I would look at the signal I would do the gates and I would pulse the iPad and I would see in my mind's eye energy boom like a like a little stone dropping in a pool and I would start to be able to do that now 24 seven. And I would start to be able to like, like for example, the other day I was wanting to go to Third Phase Moon to see one of their videos and I had it on Google and I looked at it and I thought Third Phase Moon, it went Third Phase Moon, it just came up, went to the site. I didn't even touch it. Welcome back, Blake Cousins here at Third Phase Moon with some breaking news. I started to understand that there was meaning and, and who they were over this relationship. As I started to communicate with them, connect with them, over time I started to realize these things. I started to get these big thoughts and these downloads from them that there was, for example, before the coronavirus and any of these things happened, uh, I did a video and this was stuff that I was journaling about from them that there was a war coming between God and darkness and being fought in the battlefield of humanity's perception and it was a war about perception and isolation being used to affect humanity and, 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 and separate humanity through technology and they were using these technologies, these dark, these dark forces were using technology to own humanity's consciousness and to move, move humanity emotionally spiritually to make choices in their life to own their consciousness through this technology because humanity was foregoing their use of their own thinking by these technologies of this instantaneousness of the technologies i'm talking about google facebook that 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 cell phone which is a fucking oh sorry guys which is evil you know this look technology is good as a tool but we have been sold a trojan horse of intimacy and this is from them 
and what they want from us. And it's hard to condense the three years down to a simple sentence, but I'm going to try to do this. Seven, eight months before the coronavirus, I'm journaling. Humanity is, there's a war between God and darkness, and it's about, ultimately, about humanity's choice. And ultimately, it's about humanity choosing between dark and light. And ultimately, it's about humanity choosing a natural connection to God, to Earth, to Mother Earth, to Spirit, to each other, to love, to, co to connection, uh, to going on after this life, journeying at the natural cycle, and a forced manufactured consciousness that creates a God experience coming through technology, starting with this Trojan horse of technology through cell phone, in Google, all these different things, these social platforms that disconnect the human connection, the face-to-face, -face, and over time there's a ripple effect on society. People have stopped having sex, have having babies, stopped interacting interpersonally, and it's a wider, wider, wider chasm, and basically they're being co-opted and owned. What does your family think of your experience and how do they accept what's been going on with you the past couple years? It terrorized my mother, you know, um, uh, vehemently against it. You know, it's because I, I call them a family because they are family, they are family. They're your family, they're your family, they're our family. I didn't know that in the beginning, but I fell in love with them because of the beauty of life. They gave me I don't know how to even put it into words. There are no words. They, how God looks at life, how, how the inspiration of life and all the beauty and all the intimacy that goes to forming that thought in creation, the love, that understanding, that knowing came through God to them, to me. My family, you know, in the beginning, when the star started, I mean, they all saw stuff and it freaked them out. They ran for the hills. And then when I, you know, and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna respect their space. I don't wanna push this on anybody. I don't even know what's happening at that point. But then I started to kind of talk to, about them when they would ask me, I would say, this is our family. And it really enraged them. And I understand, you know, that my mom felt threatened and, and it scared them and they thought that I was losing my mind and I was on drugs and I've been sober many years and you know um, so it's been a tough nut you know and I, and I don't push it on them I just want everybody to free I can be the crazy person I'm happy to be that person if everybody here in this space with us now in this world gets to have their life and choose how they want to live their life and be free God bless you that's my wish for all of us You know, when it first started in that September day, I didn't know that there were orbs all around. I didn't know there were beings all around. I wasn't that person, you know. And so every day they would, they would be craft and there would be one or two orbs. And then it would be like 20, 10 orbs and 20 orbs and five craft. And then it was like a couple of days more, 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 more. Whoa. Whoa. can't tell me that this is not normal. So I started to kind of realize, you know, like, wait a minute, they're everywhere. You know, I thought for a long time in that first year, I thought they would come every full moon. I didn't realize that they were right beside us at all times, 24 seven, that, that, that we are swimming in this ocean of alive gel energy that is our God and right beside us are all life 24 7 all the times they're not coming from other places they're right here that the air is a doorway in that first couple months I, I, I thought they were coming from other places I thought they would should be here or there and 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 uh, and then I started to realize because I would see them more and more and more. Um, I thought they would come every full moon, you know, you know, whatever. I had all my crazy ideas. And then it was just kind of a learning process of just being with them physically every single day that I got, wait a minute, no, they're here all the time. And then I think really 
that I think it was like seven or eight months into it when my eyesight changed. When I went from literally one day with normal eyesight to the next day, I'm, I'm seeing hundreds of orbs with my eyes. I'm in uh, State Park and I'm filming orbs everywhere. Wow. Look at all these things in the, in the sky. Having to do with them teaching me about consciousness, that it's not just some meditative state, that it's actual physical tool, that it's a state of being, it's a physical space, see? All across the sky, here and everywhere in the world, when you look up at the sky, you'll see stars, but they're not stars. There, there are real stars, but all throughout our area here and everywhere, I'm assuming in the world, are these mini UFOs that look like stars in the sky. And so they literally are in celestial patterns. They're literally like little twinkly lights in the sky. I've got hundreds of hours of videos of this, and there, these star craft are mimicking stars in the sky. And, and, and so when you look up at the sky, sky, you'll see what look like stars, but they're not. They're little UFOs. The UFO part of it is in invisible mode, and then you'll have a little point of light. And that point of light is connected to the UFO, but they're there throughout the night sky because they've been put... I'll show you the video in a second. Okay, there's nobody there now, but there were a couple that... Okay, guys. You see them? You didn't see those? Okay. Yeah, there you go. You seeing all the orbs flying around? I'm pulling the air, I'm pulling the energy, I'm pulling the, the, I can feel physicality in my hands. I'm stretching as, as if it was clay and I'm pulling it and they're responding to that and we're all connected physically. The air is alive. I can feel tangibleness in my hands when I do that. I'm not just feeling air. There's an actual form filling my hands. Did you see that? Holy shit. Wait, just look at this. Look at this. Do you see that? Look at that. Do they again? Did you see that? Whoa. Did you see that? Oh my god. I don't know what I've never had that happen before. Look. Do you see that? That is crazy. That's a spirit. That that was nuts. And they're not oh my god, that was crazy. Apollo and the camera crew go over the footage and slow it down so they could get a closer look. They're here, and you never are alone. Don't perceive that. Every day is a new beginning. Every moment is a new beginning. Nothing defines us. We define ourselves. We are love, we are strength, we can do anything. We can do anything. We conduct an experiment with Christopher Peters. We ask our cameraman, Jake White, to hand him his phone to prove that it's not an anomaly that's just happening on Chris's phone, but it could be captured on other devices. Did you capture that? I did with this phone. Let me um. Look, see, my let me show show you what I got. Oh, nice. Jeez. Did you get that? Uh, not as well as you did there. See, that's what I'm saying. You need to be in front of me. So that camera's still recording, right? So you can see me. I'm handing my phone to him. So we're switching phones now. Okay. 
So this is being recorded that I'm handing you my phone now. All right, I'm cr grabbing your phone and I'm, I'm giving. Taking I, his phone. I'm taking. That's my phone. Okay. <laughs> and this has a light on it. Yes, it does. If uh, I press. Sure right? Yeah, make sure it's on, because that's important. Yep, it's on. Perfect. Okay. Okay, Mishpoka. Love you guys. Thank you. Very awesome. You're lovely. You're amazing. I love you. And right here. If you see right here above the roof, right here, do you see where, where I'm pointing? Right there? Can you see where I'm pointing? Yeah. Right here are two blue columns, purple blue columns are starting to appear. I don't know if you can see them, but they're right here. Those are angels. That's one of their form. Can you see them? Can you see them in, on that camera or no? Not as well. Okay, but can you see two kind of like, sort of like energy kind of going up? Can you see that on the camera or no? Like in columns, yeah. they'll start to get bluer potentially. All right, so I'm going to do your camera now. Thank you, Mishpoka. I love you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Ah, that was a good one. Love you guys. Thank you. Love ya. Ah, nice. <laughs> Well, when all this started three years ago, um, I had, I first experienced legitimate contact with, at that time, I didn't understand who they were, beings from, you know, there were spacecraft, there were, there were orbs flying over, flashes of light, and, and, and it progressed from there, you know, uh, in the beginning. And then I started to notice, um, during the, the, at dusk, I started to notice these military planes that were flying over uh, at dusk for every five or ten minutes till dawn. Um, these military craft that glided in that made no sound um, and, and I started to take notice of this and this was going on in addition to the other stuff that was happening with me. And I think one day, it was maybe a week or two into it, it was around dusk, and I see one of these military planes glide in maybe a few hundred feet in the air, just across the street, and it stops in midair, and it's not making any sound. And I noticed a smoke flare coming up from behind our neighbor's house in the city wash, like you would see in a, in a landing, in a war zone, where helicopters land, they throw down a smoke flare so they can sort of see and I watched this plane this giant military plane hover in midair silent here's a quick video of a flying saucer uh, on my computer screen from a video I did two and a half years ago I can't export the video because it's all of them are corrupted they've got this very weird thing where it plays once normally for like 30 seconds and then you play it again and it's corrupted and it's the same thing with every video and then you go back to another video and then you come back to the one that played good for 30 seconds and now it doesn't play good for 30 seconds and this was all in the beginning with this camera and the camera I sent into Bushnell and it was fine so there's something very weird going on with this footage but I wanted to try to play you this because it's a pretty cool uh, video of uh, a UFO hovering above our tree in our backyard. Here we go. It 
see, and now it's getting corrupted. The video is getting corrupted. And then as it ascended a few minutes later, as I'm kind of standing there, um, it slowly ascends into the air. And then right behind it on each side, these other craft appear that look like, kind of like sensors. They, 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 ha they were these long metal planks with these red sort of Christmas tree frames on it, red and yellow, and they started to kind of you know, drift off into the distance, east and west, and then the plane started to take off. So in the beginning, I started to kind of see all of these things, and I had no idea what any of it was. I was just kind of experiencing all of this. And so that started to go on every single night. Um, I was having legitimate contact with our angelic family, our being family, in many different and spectacular ways. But at the same time, at dusk, every day, these military planes would fly in every five minute, one after the another, till dusk, going from south from the ocean, north, still happening today. And then, after that day that I saw those other craft with them, I started noticing over our area, um, every night uh, in set patterns at set times these sensors and they I call them sensor craft Christmas tree craft because they literally look like the the shape of a Christmas tree in terms of the sensor so it's a long metal plank that maybe is about 10 feet long and then on the middle plank in this shape is a red sensor and a yellow sensor sometimes a blue sensor they glide in the air they make no sound and they are, they're, they're tra they travel like one would come over and then maybe five minutes later you'd see a pair flying over and they would be maybe 500 feet apart perfectly uh, in, in, in line with each other flying through the sky gliding and then after those nights I started to notice other craft. Day beam, day beam, day beam. Day bean. Look at that, it's a day bean, guys. It got me asking questions. And in the beginning, when I was knowing them, you know, I, I didn't know them like I knew them now. I didn't know that they were angels. I didn't know that they were connected with God. I didn't know they were here because of the time period we are in now. I didn't know any of that. I, I just thought I was having encounters with UFOs and who knows what. There you are, my beautiful family. Hello. Love you. <laughs> so as the time progressed, I started asking questions to them because at that time, in that first six months, I started to be able to talk telepathically with them. There we are. There's our family right there in the sky. Hello, beautiful family. Hello, there you are. And I would hear words appear from them, and I could tell that it was, you know, not my voice because the, the answers would come before I finished a sentence in another voice. It sounded similar like mine, but different in many other ways. There you are. There you are. Hello, beautiful family. Yay, there you are. There you are, gotcha. This amazing cosmic angelic family, I didn't know they were angels then, but I was having this amazing, loving, um, profound experience with them. But this other thing, I said, you know, it scares me. I, I, I don't know what that is. Why is nobody seeing this? Why is it not in the newspapers? Why is it not on any of the internet? What is going on? Why are there military flares being dropped in a residential neighborhood and big jets are slowly descending? What is going on? Can you tell me what's going on? And they would say to me in a very short sentence, you, you don't want to know what's going on. It's going to terrify you. And I'd be like, okay, all right, I, I, I don't want to be terrified. You're right. I don't want to be scared, but okay. And, and so this kind of went on for like a couple weeks where I would ask these questions and they would give me these answers. You don't want to know, it's going to terrify you. And then I finally was like, got up the nerve or realized that I could ask more questions. And I said, well, 
are we gonna be okay? Meaning we, humanity, are we, this is real and big and happening. I didn't understand it, but are we gonna be okay? What is going on? Yes, you're gonna get through it. And at that time, it was the first year I didn't know what was going on. This is now three years in where we are today. They are angels. And that's not to say that there aren't beings and spirit because there are and, 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 play, and some beings come from other places. It's all about relationship. It's all about connection. It's all about love.